Good afternoon, cabbies and cabets. My name is Sean Paul Day, and you are listening to or watching London Taxi Radio. Now, about six months ago, I invited cab driver Mickey Harris over to talk about the launch of his new taxi hailing app. Appropriately named Unify, its intention was to bring the cab trade together under the umbrella of its own technological solution, you could say. There was also a very compelling heartfelt backstory, as well as a commitment from Mickey to donate profits to registered taxi charities. Well, six months on, and he is back, in the back, to give us an update. Good afternoon, Mickey. It's great to see you as always. Now, can you just give us a bit of an overview on how it's going? I can. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me back. Um, an overview from where I am, from the first time when you actually launched me out to the world, because yours was the first podcast, the right. first video footage that actually went out, I think apart from the ITV breaking the story, um, you're the first person that interviewed me. And, and since then, it's gone on in leaps and bounds. Uh, then. If you, oh wow, it's a bit hard to actually contextualise it, and I don't often do it that far. Where we were then, which was all will they accept us, will the trade accept us, you know, will it work, and uh, you know, and will the actual app work, and will the drivers come, to where we are now is it's like two separate worlds. Now we're sitting here now, and we've got just about 3,000 drivers on the app, which I have absolutely outstanding that they come I'm so proud of all of them. I love every single one I don't know any of them because they were <laughs> I only know a handful of them but they're all so they just come uh, the trade all the trade organizations the trade bodies the LTDA and the LCDC and everybody else I've spoken to and uh, taxi PR have all given me full encouragement go forward go forward this is a good app go forward and the customers are coming on board and then out of the blue uh, as I just kept going on and just building it up from nothing, and then build up to a thousand drivers, two thousand drivers, and then three thousand drivers. And then out of the blue, I get contacted by the office of the Prime Minister, and I get given an award. Um, it's a Point of Light award, which the Prime Minister—I didn't even know it existed. I'll be honest with you, and I certainly wouldn't have known that I was actually in line for one. Someone had obviously put my name forward. Any idea who? No, no idea whatsoever, none. I've always thought about who it could be, and I thought, should I ask? And then I thought to myself, probably best not to ask, I don't know. Um, it's the altruistic value of it. It's the fact that we that once we've run the app, and we pay the staff, and we keep the app updated, and we've updated it, what, I think nine times for the drivers, and 11 times for customers, as we find faults or errors that need to be changed. So we update the app, and I think, it's then when all the profits are to be given to the charities, the taxi charity for military veterans, and uh, oh, everywhere really, the children's charities, all the charities that we run as well. I've also got a local hospice where that were close to me, that, right. uh, and uh, so I give to them, and of the cancer research, and the Royal British Legion have given me permission to use their logo as well, and I can actually give funds to them as well, which I would have do, which I was going to, to do anyway. But um, it just seems to have come together, and obviously someone's brought that to the attention of the Prime Minister, and when you actually realise what it is that we're doing, and the potential for what we're doing, it's actually starting to dawn on me now just how enormous it is, yeah. or no, potentially really, is, and I think really that's what news. the award was for, I think. That's really good news, and uh, well deserved as well. well um, but I have to turn around and look backwards, because when, when, when they first contacted, I thought it was a scam. <laughs> it's very and you've no idea who put you up for this? No, because you get it through, it says like the Prime Minister, I thought, here yeah, we go, yeah, someone's yeah, yeah. fishing, you know what I mean? And you go through it, but it isn't, and they come down and they give the award, and I have no idea who put us forward. Um, but in all honesty, if you, if I had read it about someone else, I think, yeah, what, you know, in world, you know, but when you see it about yourself, you kind of look at, do they mean me? You, know, you yeah, turn yeah. around and they say these nice things about you, and you have to just double check. No, but, yeah, very well deserved. But for the few people out there that haven't heard of Unify, yeah. uh, can you tell us a little bit about how it works and what makes it different from the other apps? Well, I think every single platform in the past has all taken a percentage from the driver. Mm. It's, and it's like a race to the bottom. Uh, charge a customer the fare or, and take as much as you can, keep it cheaper, 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 cheaper. Whereas really what we're after is service, 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 service. So at Unify, we offer the full taxi service to customers. They pay the metered price. If it says £20 on the meter, they pay £20 on the meter and the driver gets £20. We don't take any money from that transaction at all. And then the app takes a £2 booking fee, which TFL regulate. They say you can take a £2 booking fee. And it's, it's written on the pricing structures yeah, as well. Yeah. 
So really the Hackney carriage works so that the driver's hired from the how. So the moment he gets hired, he starts his meter and away he goes. And, uh, and at the end of it, we get the two pound booking fee. And so we're trying to operate fully within the TFL mm -hmm. and Hackney carriage pricing structures. And that's the same, not exploiting anybody. You know, I want this app to be non-exploitative. Yeah. So that actually we actually give in um, back to the communities in which we live in. I'm really, I mean, you take £20 fare, the customer pays £20, £2 booking fee, we pay the staff, pay for the app and pay for the upkeep, and then all of the money goes to the charities in which the taxes are working. Taxes paid in the correct country, there's no exploitation. Yeah, what uh, would you say has been the most challenging aspect of setting up an app like Unify? Uh, well, when I started off from the very, very beginning, a learning curve like that. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. you need to find out how to build an app. I went to the app developers thinking that they did it all for you, when really you have to design it all yourself, and then they go back and they code it and create it for you. All the graphics you have to design, so you need graphics teams. As well. So that's massive there. Actually getting it and I then mean, from how launch. Long, how yeah. long did that take, that process um, of going to the app developers? About 11 months. 11 months. 11 yeah. months. Uh, between, yeah, along those lines. I mean, it would have done, because when we first went there, it was 11 months, but then we had to come away and do everything first, which took a couple of months and then we went back. So then when we went back to the developers with the stuff that we should have had, it took eight to nine months then, so. I can see that, look, whatever, it's going to be hard work to do, isn't it? Yes. What has been the most rewarding aspect of doing it? By far, the drivers. Yeah, yeah. By far, the drivers. I mean, because they are our colleagues, aren't they? We, we're not always on friendly terms with all of them, <laughs> but, well, you are, you know you what they like. You can say that again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but in actual fact, they will understand what it is now that I've that what I'm trying to do. Mm. When I first launched, it was just another app, okay, and really that's really what I was until the altruistic value could actually get itself established. Until people started to realise and the jobs come in and people were getting all the money and they realised that actually hey, this guy's actually telling the truth here. This guy's being honest about this, and I think that's enticing them in as well. Other apps getting greedier and greedier, or other platforms, not necessarily apps, but okay, because they're, they're all out there charging more and more. I mean, I even saw online this morning, customers being charged 28, 30 pound for 12 and 14 pound rides, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the driver isn't even getting the 12 yeah. or 14 pounds. So they're making more out of each ride than the driver is. And there's no need for it. No. It shouldn't be that way. So the exploitation isn't just us. It isn't just us that are all being ripped off as drivers. The customers are being screwed rotten for it. Well, it doesn't serve our brand well, does no, it? Uh, because, no. Because we have to treat the meter as sacrosanct, don't we? Well, it is. I mean, I, mean, I was talking to a customer the other day. And I said, if you think about it, all the different different rides that are offered, all the different vehicles that are on offer out there, okay? All of them have got different qualifications or no qualifications. None of them really know where they're going, they're all driving around and, and, and taking you out on a big wide route, taking as much money off of you as they can. They're not all savoury, some of them are a bit dodgy with some of the customers in the back. You'd think I was talking about Uber now, but yeah. that was King Charles the First back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like we've gone full circle back to King Charles the Third, and I think that needs to be reinstated. <laughs> I'm serious, I think we've gone full circle in that sense, because you look at what out on the street now many different vehicles half of them unchecked you know what i mean yeah. some of the women out there that are being molested and the, the sexual assaults in some of the vehicles as it gets reported is horrendous you know but also but also we've always argued the fact that the it, it could never have been the intention of the original the original hackney carriage acts that you had third-party profiteers come in to no. circumvent no. the meter and the regulation. The whole point of the regulations, the legislation and the meter, was to protect the driver and the yes. passenger. And uh, technically, they're still trying to say that they operate within the law because that meter was there to protect both the driver yeah, yeah. and the passenger. Okay, And then what it is, they need to assert that ma that meter price. They need, to, they need to set that as the basis. I treat it like an hourglass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the meter is the pinch point on the hourglass and they want to put as much sand in there as they can at the top mm. Okay, by charging you oh there's a booking fee oh there's a technology fee or yeah, there's yeah. a there's a it's a busy fee oh it's yeah. raining and we need to allow it to encourage more drivers in the area yeah. we're charge more and more and then what happens is when it comes to the other end of it they don't want to let that sand out so the yeah. driver's only getting 80 percent 85 percent and that's all he's going to get you know what I mean? so what happens is that difference between what they take and what they pay that's their profit. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's how course. business works, isn't it? Profit. Yeah. So I've got the hourglass and turn it upside down. Let's pay the driver the full amount, all of it. Okay, let's keep as much up there as we can and I'll just yeah. take a two pound booking fee, done. I mean, sometimes you know I mean? we can be our own worst enemy. We, we say that the meter is absolute. Yes. And then 
sometimes cab drivers like this additional money that's on top well, to yeah. encourage them to take the jobs. Well, yes. I mean, when they get you like surge pricing, okay, or if you like, they. Um, they do it. They call them premiums, don't they? Yeah. There's premiums. a seven pound well, premium. There's a twelve pound. A 50, 15 yeah. Pound. yeah. And what they do, they need to, they need and want to destroy the meter. That meter at the totally. moment, that meter is all that is protecting, not this trade, but protecting the public. And what happens is they can say, oh well, we only charge the meter price, and we charge a two pound booking fee. That's always on the app. If you have a look at the invoices, yeah. that's there. That's the meter price and the two pound booking yeah, fee. Yeah. The other charges are additional charges that they've created. They're not so they're not charging you technically more than the meters, and that's how they're getting away with it. But it's those additional charges yeah. that are the technology fee or or the I know this a busy fee. What do you want to call it? Surge pricing. That's the bit that does it. That's the bit that came in with some of the big corporates when they came in. They based everything on the. the Busier it is, the more they would charge. I mean, you try getting in some of these platforms, okay, and you try booking yourself a ride around New Year's Eve. You'll yeah. be paying five, six, seven, That's eight, right. ten times the fare. I mean, they and euphemistically called it dynamic pricing, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, it's not. They're just going to rip you, off the customer yes, as much as they course. can, of course, you know what I mean, and yeah. keep that money for themselves. But that's how their business model works. Now, look, you've quite often referred to this app as a legacy app yes. in memory of your late wife. Um, but what would you say to drivers? What would you say to drivers that uh, would turn around to you and say, well, we've been here before. We've been on apps which yep. have only used taxi drivers as a stepping stone to private hire. Yes. Or they've sold off the family jewels somewhere <coughs> down the line. Yeah. What would you say to drivers about this being different and the way that you are determined that nobody else can come into it and nobody else can take it over and nobody right. else can sell it. I mean, this app, I mean, as I said before, it's, it's a legacy app from my wife, okay? And we put it together and we put it out there for the trade. And the whole purpose of it is to stop the exploitation. Okay, we've got to stop this exploitation from happening. And if I was to so much as sell some of this app out, mm -hmm. say let somebody else take over, straight away they want to want to start charging commissions. Straight away they want to start bringing in the private eye because they can't cover all the work. I know in the best will in the world, I could have every single taxi in the country on this app. And if everybody had started using it, there wouldn't be enough taxis. And yeah, that's yeah. where the corporations start going, oh, well, we're missing all this work, let's get more in. Let's and that's what then destroys it. And you end up with this downward spiral will race to the bottom again. So how, how do you protect it from happening? There isn't anything in the world that can stop someone from actually changing things afterwards. All right? And that's what all the drivers know. That's what's happened in the past. We've all been lied to before. Oh, all in it together, lads. Oh, no, we're not. Just just us four. You know what I mean? Or whatever it is. You know, yeah, or just yeah, us yeah. couple. Yeah. Oh, we've brought in some outside corporates for some advertising. No, you haven't. You've sold out chunks of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you have to keep it. And it's within your heart that does that, isn't it? I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, if I was to actually turn around and let this app go to other people, I would. Oh, I feel inside that I would then suffer from mm -hmm. an eternity of shame. Okay, because it would be my wife's soul that I've sold. It wouldn't just be my soul that I've sold to the devil. It'd be my wife's soul. You can't do that. Yeah. You can't. I mean, you just couldn't. You'd rip yourself, rip yourself apart. Before I got to the stage that I'd ever do that, I'd just switch it all off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't owe anybody any money. I don't. I haven't got any shareholders. I've got no business partners. It's just me, and I'm trying to do this for the right reason, so that I can actually help all the communities as well. I know it sounds a bit altruistic and a bit bit large thinking, but why not? No, it's you know refreshing. I mean? And uh, and you think to yourself, well, let's do this. And as I've been repeating this message over and again, so drivers are coming on board with it, and the drivers are repeating it out to customers as well. This app is safe and secure as it is as taxi drivers, all of us. This is what we actually need. This is the app that we should have had years ago. If we had this it's app, true. if we had this app, none of those other apps would exist because yeah. they can't get anybody else. We are the taxi drivers. If we all decide that we're not going to work on that, including my app, you know, or any platform out there, if, all, if us as drivers decide, right, we're not going to work on that app anymore, we're going to go and work on this app over here, okay, then all the other apps disappear, mine included. If the drivers don't come, I've got no app. That's right. It's as simple as that. And it's, and it's my job is to guide the drivers and promise the drivers and show them that we are safe and that this app is secure and that it's not going anywhere. All I mean, right? you say, I mean, you mentioned earlier, you've got about 3,000 drivers on the app. In your experience with the work coming through, what do you need for critical mass to cover the work coming through. So you, you, your supply is meeting the demand right. effectively. Yeah. Now that's the the sixty four thousand dollar question yeah. at the beginning. When I was asked originally, I'd say, "Oh, I need at least fifteen hundred to two thousand drivers." 
<clears throat> in reality I need about five yeah right because yeah, yeah, yeah. you can cover the map but then you get the greater London region and the drivers are getting pulled out for other jobs because uh, obviously people want taxis okay they like taxis they yeah. like our service and they're getting pulled out everywhere so I think it just the more I get the more I need the more I get the greater That's the true. area I get the more demand yeah, we yeah. get the more drivers I need so what I really need, and this is important, I mean, I don't want to bring other apps into this or other competition into this, but one of the big, the big app at the moment, the uh, private hire app of the world, okay, the Uber Nationals, okay, the Uber <laughs> yeah, right, um, <laughs> launched, didn't it? It came yeah. out a couple of weeks ago, and, oh, this was after the BBC had publicised the fact that I had 3,000 drivers on the app and, yeah. and, had, and had put that. And then all of a sudden, two weeks later, out comes Uber. Oh, we're letting uh, black cabs onto our circuit again. Oh, and we're going to give them the full price and we're going to charge the customers two quid. And I'm like that. I'm high-fiving in the, in the kitchen with, with my sister, okay, because we know, we know that we cause that. There was no way Uber were ever going to come out and give the driver all the money on the meter and only charge the customers no, two quid. No way. Of not. And so I'm just sitting there thinking to ourselves that we actually caused them to put the brakes on and because they know that if we got 3,000 drivers, they ain't silly. They know it's a numbers game. They know mm -hmm. it's a numbers game. Well, we've already done that and now we've got other, other apps out there running surveys out now. How important is the commission? Should we charge the customers more and all this sort of stuff? Because they were trying to justify the changes that they're going to need to make. Yeah, yeah. And it gets even better than this, I'll tell you, Sean, because if the drivers just sign up for this app, for Unify, it puts even more pressure on those other apps. Mm -hmm. So those other apps at the moment which are screwing you for high percentages, they take, you know, 15, 20% off you, okay, or more if they could get away with it, are actually having to think now because they've been advertising for drivers for a long time, okay, but the drivers won't join them. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, oh, we've pretty much got as many drivers. And also I come along and I get 3,000 drivers. They've got to start thinking, whoops, because if I stick there with a couple more thousand drivers on it, we have become a better service, more available to the, to totally, the customers yeah. out there. And all of a sudden they're sitting there thinking, we better sort this out. So they're gonna to have to rethink that 15, 20% They maybe actually lower that. So if you actually want more money from these other apps, sign up for this one. Yeah, Which yeah. I know it's crazy, I'm not advertising those other apps, but yeah, I want yeah, you to yeah. get on my app, because it's by you all coming together, unifying, we're actually starting to put a pressure where it's needed now some of the big organizations and some of the big uh, trade organizations are actually realizing that there's something here there's something in this i mean i don't want to uh, go in advance of the papers but in the next issue of the badge there's a whole big section on this going on in there so they've and uh, i'm quite impressed with what they've been doing for me there and uh, i just think get on board yeah. get on board sign up give me your numbers if they give me the numbers if they give me those numbers all right it will scare these apps into actually delivering the service that we really need as oh, a absolutely. public and i think we've always had to be a bit cautious about the intentions yeah. of the corporate apps we just need to let them know that we're actually in charge yeah. as drivers we're all independent i have no doubt i own well i own one taxi my own well I almost own it. i'm still paying it but um, no app owns any taxis Okay, they are all they have is us. That's right. Okay, that's and, right. and well, they the, utilize the services yeah, of taxi drivers, yeah. don't they? And that we're there on a promise. Oh, come to us and we'll get you some money. Yeah, right. But what's happening is that promise is getting weaker and weaker as they take a greater and greater percentage or make us look really bad by charging 35, 40 pounds for right. 15, 20 pound rides. But we're the face they see, yeah. we're the ones that get the blame for it. Well, interestingly, as well, in 2015, when we was in a very weakened state in 2015, wasn't we? Yeah, um. Get came in and they was knocking 30% off fares and they were turning around and saying, well, price elasticity is what matters. The meter is too rigid. And we had very little argument because we didn't have our own app to turn around no. and say, actually, no, what the customer wants is the meter. It's the service. What the meter is there to protect Completely. the customer. But, and, and this is the thing, with the exploitation that's taking place, you couldn't go anywhere. Because it didn't matter whether someone was this this app was charging loads of uh, the customer above the fare. This one's charging above the fare. Yeah, this yeah. one's charging, this one's taking twenty percent. This one's taking fifteen percent. This one's taking eighteen. Like, where is it's? They're all trying to be less evil than the other one, and because they're less evil than the other, oh, we're good, aren't we? Because we only take we only exploit you this much. Oh, we're better than them because we exploit you this much, but we don't exploit the yeah, customer so much. So yeah. it's that what level of exploitation is acceptable? Well, to me, none of it. Mm -hmm. And so, so I just thought, no, you're all bad. You when can we all talk, go away. When we talk about them investing in the taxi trade itself, really they're investing in their own business model, aren't they? I don't 
don't see much investment from them, to be honest with no. you. I see them actually, they may invest in an app, they may actually upgrade the app, mm -hmm. but I don't see much investment in the trade. Yeah. I don't see it out there. I don't yeah. see them. I think they're not giving us uniforms to wear, are they? It won't no. be long, will it? A little cloth cap. I mean, what I do see, it. and this is, this is an interesting point uh, that we can talk about. What I do see is when I go on YouTube sometimes, I see advertising from free now or yeah. sometimes from get, certainly from Uber. Yeah. You don't have that kind of money. I mean, no. they, they have millions at their disposal yep. to do that kind of advertising. How do you go about recruiting drivers? Uh, my mo most of my recruitment for drivers comes from word of mouth. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you, <coughs> it's the cheapest form of advertising and the best. Because if I have to go running up and down the ranks, okay, oh, please sign up with my app, please, I've lost. I've lost. I thought this immediately, always from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. All right? If the drivers, this app's good, get on here. This app's good, get on this. The work's coming in, get on this. Well, if we all get on here, this will happen. And then I go into the taxi magazines and I advertise to drivers. Hmm. And every time a driver signs up, now look, I give them one of these for their flip seats, okay? And then I give them two of these for their windows. Okay, like these, the Unify stickers that go on the, on, on underneath their identifiers. Yeah, yeah. And that's all the advertising I need. If that's in the taxi, where are our customers? Our customers are in the cab. There's the That's advertising. Right, yeah. Okay, yes, I can't afford to to advertise to six million Londoners. Okay, out of which ninety percent of those don't use black cabs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. it's a, it's a cost that's way beyond my capabilities. I'd have to sell my house just for about five seconds worth of yeah, air. Yeah, makes air sense time. to advertise to people right. already in the cab. But the customers pass it amongst themselves. When they order a taxi, bosh, and I've noticed that the work level start, is starting to increase. And then I get, um, as I said, when I got the Prime Minister's Award, that gave me publicity that I couldn't have, have never yeah, have afforded. Yeah, yeah. And they, even on Sunday, I'm going on the BBC One nationally, national TV on Sunday, okay? Whether it's this Sunday or it airs next Sunday, but, you can't buy publicity like that. You really can't. I mean, that's coming out from all the right reasons. And when people see it, they'll download it. And then I've got a, an advertising company. I don't want to give their name out on air because they may be a bit offended and I don't want to embarrass them. But they're a large one and they're in Bishopsgate. Huge, great, eight floors of advertising agency. They called me in. I sat down with them for an hour and a half with the CEO and a couple of board members and, uh, and some heads of department. And they've just conversation they gave me a coffee an hour and a half later I've still got half of it in the cup and it's cold and they grilled me on everything they asked me all so many questions I have no idea what they asked to be honest with you now and then she came to me and she gave me a big hug and said Mickey you have a product and I said well yes miss and she said no 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 you have a product oh well, well yes miss I've got an app and she, and she took the cup out of my hand and she said we have just asked you all these questions and she had a great long list of all these tick boxes she said you have ticked every single box i said oh, i didn't know the word boxes miss i'm sorry look i didn't know and where why she hugged me again <laughs> and she said uh we are going to run an advertising campaign for you for free really for free now these are the people at the moment you see them all the posters everywhere that ee you see the yeah, ee yeah, the yeah, broadband yeah. ones these are the company that do all those they own all the boards yeah so as the boards become uh free so they're going to put unify on the boards that's incredible and that's nationally shouldn't we give them a shout out Oh, let's see if it happens first. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a point. That's a I don't point. want to. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. they, they wouldn't lie. They were they were absolutely gobsmacked of what I'd done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they said to me, "How much help have you had?" To one and when they found out, it was like at that time it, with a design and everything. It was myself and my wife because Barbara designed most of this with the graphics team, and she even came up with the name Unify. And when we'd actually put it all together, they were just blown away with the quality of everything that we'd produced on virtually no budget. They have like million uh, million pounds worth of teams that have got loads of people there to actually yeah, yeah, produce yeah. what we have done. Well, hopefully something. I might get a job out of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> really, I can go hopefully. Work, I could go and work for McCann and Ericsson, can't I? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. did I say their name? <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> well, hopefully something comes of that because that's a big deal. Yes, that's a big deal. I mean, if I end up on BBC, ITV News, Channel 4 doing a documentary, I've got McCann and Ericsson putting a publicity out there, and how much does it cost me? It's cost me everything that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, I'm still yeah. running time. around. Yeah, time, 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 yeah, yeah, time yeah. which I haven't got because I have to. This is really weird. I do all of this stuff, okay, but then I've still got to pay the mortgage. Yeah, that's I've right. still got to pay my gas and electricity. So I still have to get in the cab and go and, go and do my yeah, 10, 12 hours every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah 10, and of course, 12 hours. Yeah, well, I have to do it because you've got stuff to pay out it puts for. Puts me to shame. Like <laughs> four and a half hours. I say 10, 12. <laughs> it's probably about six or seven, but I mean. 
and uh, and I was, it's, people, see, people see me out at the airport I've kind of got my tag came through yeah, at yeah, last yeah. you know what I mean so it was a, now, it was look, a we blessing. just want to catch up because at the beginning we did talk about the charities yep. that you were um, committed to donating profits to uh, but you're also uh, intrinsically involved with the taxi charity for military veterans yes, haven't you so yes. what have you been up to with them well, we had the Christmas meal. That was the last thing yeah, that we did. That's the, the last the thing we did. I've done the, 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 yeah. the Millwall football ground. Christmas. And then it's really, I mean, we they do the odd trip for, uh, and sort out the occasional yeah, yeah, yeah. but it'll be really gearing up now for the 80th anniversary of D-Day. That'll yeah, be something that we're really building up for next year. I mean, there's, we, we, there is... Um, We've got film crews coming with us, travelling out to Normandy and, and coming out to... I think some may even come out to uh, Holland with us just to get some footage. I know it's two different events, but yeah. be, I think we'll see a lot more of it on the BBC. It'll be a big anniversary, so there'll be a lot more TV coverage oh, Brilliant, and out. I've got to say, I must get hold of Francis Wachowska and uh, the relatively new chairperson, uh, Brian Heffernan, yep. because he's doing great things. And uh, if you want to donate to the taxi charity, because it is a wonderful charity that does some remarkable events, you can go to taxicharity.org and you can follow follow the links on the page and you can donate that way because yeah. it really is a great great charity oh yeah it? i think uh, it's hard to distinguish one between another it because is. they yeah. all i mean yeah. i'm yeah. trying to represent all of them even though i'm sitting here i've got my taxi charity <laughs> yeah <laughs> t-shirt underneath but um whether it's the one and you've got the magical children's magical tour yeah, okay yeah. Oh, oh god that's heartrending that one and then you've got the albany charity as well and we sit there with a the Lon uh, london taxi drivers charity well it is children. very difficult to pick one above the other yeah. and I, I will say I think some get more press coverage than others they do, yes, and I'm therefore they sit in the side and sometimes it's those that don't get the press yeah, coverage yeah, that actually yeah. need more help so but also what, but know. also sometimes it's easy when you're on your own in the cab to feel a bit down about things and if you kind of got involved in some of the wonderful things that the taxi trade has to offer like the charities then you feel more invested in the trade itself don't you so yeah. it is actually worth getting involved in and like you said you plan to donate profits and this is a reason to get on unify isn't it uh, because profits from the app will go to these charities, won't yeah, it? I'm going to talk directly to the yeah, drivers go. now. I don't normally do this. I mean, it's our plan and it's our ideology that we will run this as a business. This business has to succeed. It has to pay for itself in order to keep to keep running. But it's that, what do we do with the profits? And that's where we're actually coming into this. So all of these charities will benefit from, from our profits, okay? And there are some larger charities out there that can also do with it. I mean, my wife passed away with cancer, so if I can give any money to cancer research or to the hospice that looked after her, I will do so. And it's the same for the other local hospices around the capital as well. If I've got money available, I will give it to them. And all we need to be successful is for you as drivers to download the app, register, and then when you get these packs that I send out, driver packs, when you get the packs, put the flip seat sticker on and put your window stickers in like this young man here as he's got his one up there, okay, in the back of the window and put them front and back. The other drivers will see them and as we build up the image more and more and the corporate image, customers are going to get inside, they'll see our corporate image and we can grow the app organically, mm -hmm. I think is the best way for that. And it's down to you guys really not down to me i've done all i can and i'm doing all i can i'm getting as much publicity as i can i'm trying to make the trade look better each time that we see it every time with somebody puts that out there on the bbc or itv or channel 4 or on billboards for us okay it makes all of us look better that's right it makes us all feel better the london taxi drivers aren't just little cabbies okay it is a trade it is an iconic yeah. uh, institution that people have a great deal of respect for and we all get that as soon as we sit in that cab as soon as we drive it you're a cabbie you transcend now into into that london taxi driver and that's all of us so sign up register sign up. and i would say by virtue of him calling people like me a young man well, is reason enough <laughs> is reason enough to sign up it needs to shave <laughs> yes, <laughs> I absolutely yeah. do uh, just to clarify how can they join the app uh, straight on you can, uh, oh, here we go um, onto the play store onto uh, I can't even think now you caught me unaware with that one <laughs> Google Play Store okay and uh, on the app store as well you just type in uh, unified driver and you can sign up Please use the driver one. Okay. And is there a website they can go to for yep, more information? Got, um, again, it's our website, www.unifylondon.com, and everything you need is on there. Okay, We put all the stuff about Barbara and the legacy app and all the stuff for charities, all the links for charities. Everything is on, is on the website as well. And we keep updating that. It's about due another refresh, I think, yeah. when I get time. All right, brilliant, Mickey. Nice to see you again. Thank and you. Uh, 
well, six months goes by very quick, doesn't it? So, well, I'll see you in another six well, months' if, time. if you asked me six months ago, would I be happy where I am now? I'd have bit, yeah. your, I'd have bit your arm off. Right. Okay, I just genuinely, to look where we are now, 3,000 drivers, all those awards and all the plaudits, yeah. the TV people all coming. I sometimes dread to think, what's it going to be in another six months? Hopefully, it'll have been 8,000 drivers. Or, well, you know, or even well further, that's you know, down to you, isn't it, drivers? Yeah, Let's yeah. get behind this. Let's make it work because it is an app for the trade, only for the trade. And how can anything be better than that? I don't know, really. Yeah. <laughs> Just more customers. <laughs> All right, brilliant. All right, folks, we'll both see you out there on the mean streets. Take care. Bye bye. Be lucky, everyone. I thought you might say that. <laughs> London Taxi Radio, the cabbie's choice.